gonna fix your servers? Are you gonna fix your servers? The towers in Clash Royale are by far the most overlooked defense in the game, because without it, pushes are a lot harder to defend, and even the smallest pushes have to be defended to avoid losing or taking a ton of damage. But all of that changed when Supercell announced that tower cards were coming and the release of the powerful Cannoneer. So I spent weeks researching to see if this new tower is really worth it, and I will share the stats, counter strategies, and even the reason why it can never be better than the Princess Tower. Or in other words, it is pay to lose. However, it does also have some incredible advantages too, which I will be sharing later. First, let's talk about how to unlock the Cannoneer with this newly released chest, and it gives you a 25% chance of getting Cannoneer cards instead of the defaulted Princess Tower cards, which you then have a 75% chance of getting, and you can also get them from the level up chests as well. Interestingly enough, you can open these special chests instantly, but you'll need an average of 8 other chests before it appears in your cycle, so it's predicted that the average free-to-play player will take 6 months to get all the cards needed, which is the reason for this deal after all. Now, with all that said, let's discuss the stats of the Cannoneer and compare it to the Princess Tower for reference. The Cannoneer does about 4 times more damage than the Princess Tower, so it's similar to the damage of arrows. However, the Cannoneer attacks 3 times slower than the Princess Tower, which is the caveat, so it will get less hits than even the Electro Giants. Putting these two stats together means the DPS ratio is 4 to 3, which is really important to know for the rest of the video. All it is saying is that the Princess Tower takes longer to deal the same damage as as the Cannoneer would, which normally would be really good, and for instance tanky cards like the Balloon will only get one hit instead of the alternative when your tower is gone, but there is still a huge problem here. The overall health of the Cannoneer is about 15% lower than the Princess Tower, so a full Princess Tower will have around 3000 hit points while the Cannoneer starts with 400 less hit points. This is a big deal because it's now easier for the opponent to take the tower by dealing less hits or using less spells. This has most players suggesting that the Cannoneer's health should be equal to the Princess Tower because that would make it at least balanced. Not to mention the hit speed of the Cannoneer is already 3 times slower, which means it is extremely vulnerable to Swarm Troops. And I thought that players were already having problems with Swarm Troops, but for Cannoneer players, it just got much worse. Which had some players suggesting that adding splash damage to the Cannoneer would solve this problem, but for obvious reasons, many players also don't agree. So yeah, it has a big weakness dealing with Swarm Troops. For example, the Witch and the Graveyard will take down the Cannoneer Tower and do a ton more damage, while the Princess Tower can counter these cards, just for a handful of damage in return. Another weakness is the Skeleton Army, in which which the Cannoneer can only take down 4 of the skeletons before the tower is completely destroyed, while their Princess Tower will actually counter this. But to give credit where it's due, the Cannoneer actually does just a bit better than the Princess Tower in a lot of interactions, just not most of them, which is to be expected because the game was built on having the Princess Tower, not the Cannoneer. But anyway, this card is also really good against spawners like the Goblin Hut or the least used card in the game, which I'm sure will be very helpful. And you would think the Elite Barbarians too, but it's just too slow to do anything, which is again to be expected. And let's be honest here, most decks have an advantage against the Cannoneer Tower because of its low health alone. Take the two most popular decks for example, the 2.6 Hog Cycle and the Log Bait deck, where the point of the Hog Cycle is to get as many hits as possible, but now it needs less hits, and the Log Bait deck will have no problem relying on rockets because it takes one less rocket, and it's a defensive deck anyway that is supposed to be able to do this. Plus, there's still the slow hit speed problem for the Cannoneer, which makes decks like Giant Graveyard work 10 times times better, as one graveyard can take the whole tower, and even guards by themselves, just a 3 elixir card, will do a ton of damage. So it's clear you are paying to lose if you buy this card, but if you are still wondering why it's labeled as 7 times value, then this next video is for you.